Well, hello everybody. It's Mary with Stamps and Lingers and it is one o'clock on Thursday, which means it is time for a video on Facebook. <clears throat> I'm just going to double check over here that I'm seeing, I'm able to see comments and it looks like I've got things set up. So Mr. Zuckerberg is being good to me today so far. Knock on Melamine. Alrighty. So <clears throat> my friend and teammate, Carol Buckaloo, did a wonderful card on Wednesday. It's called a sidestep fold card. And it's kind of a, f it's, it's a very cool fold. And I'm not going to lie, it's one that I occasionally had some issues with in my head. My brain was like, oh, this is a really, really hard card. And I had never tried it. And so uh, fortunately, I was able to catch Carol's video and see it. And she did a great job. So if you don't know Inky B Stampers, you should take a take a gander at that. Hey Marva, hi Glenda, appreciate you guys coming and I hope you will enjoy our card. So she did a Christmas theme and I decided to go fall which means for this one I've pulled out the gathered wheat bundle with its wheat dies. One of my favorite little dies right there and because these leaves right here in the aspen tree dies. I was just trying to think about these. If these are not my favorite leaf dies of all time, they are for certain my favorite leaf dies that are available right now. Um, this is one I, I may have to hang on to just for those leaves because I really, really love them. They cut, they emboss, and they are gorgeous. Okay, so I've used those and I've also used a couple other things and we're going to get to that. So let's go ahead and get started. If you have had any qualms about doing a sidestep card or a middle step card or a left side step card or a right side step card, don't even be worried. It's super, super easy and I'm fixing to show you how. Okay, so you have a sentiment on the front, and then you can open it up and have a sentiment on the inside. And then I've got DSP with just a stamped image on the back. But you could, in fact, if you wanted, put another piece of matted um, basic white with maybe a, a wheat over here, and then someone could write a, a little message here. Okay, so up to you entirely, and let's go ahead and get started. Okie doke, here we go. Hey, Brooke. Appreciate you coming. What in the world is going on there? Okay. <clears throat> so Mark heard me and decided to mess with my comments. So that's cool. All right. Hopefully I'll see you. If I don't respond, if you've got a question and I don't respond, please just re-ask it because it just means it's scrolled out of the way. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Cynthia and Vicki and Faith. Appreciate you coming. Okay. So we're going to start with our Simply Scored tool here. And my card base it takes two pieces to make the side step. You have the card base, and let's call this the side step. That's clever, right? Actually, I totally stole that from Carol. So anyway, this is a five and one half by eight inch piece of cardstock, and I am going to, along the top side, the long side, I'm gonna score at three inches, and six inches, and seven inches. Okay, so three, six, seven. And then I'm going to put that to the side, and I have a 3 inch by 6 inch piece, and this is the side step, and I am going to score it one time at 4 and 1 quarter. Now you guys know that on the score tool you have a uh, stylus that has two sizes, right? A big and a little. The big one is more for uh, doing DSP because it's not quite as stout, uh, and the small one is a little more... It's got a little more oomph to it, okay? So it's it's the one that you would normally use for card stock. But I'm a little bit ham-handed, just saying. I know it's hard to believe, being that I'm such a delicate flower. But I tend to use the large one, whether I am using DSP or cardstock. So when I use this large stylus to score DSP, I make a very conscious effort to not push as hard as I normally do. Okay? So that's just me, and you do you, but there you have it. Okay, so three by six, scored at four and one quarter. And now we can put this to the side. Hello, Tara Beth. I know, delicate flower. That's me. That's what everybody says. When they see me, they're like, oh, what a delicate flower. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, Lenny, I am actually feeling better. I've still got some, you know, the, you know, the sniffly nose going on. So that's, that's what you're hearing there. Okay. Let's do a little bit of folding. Our first fold is going to be like a mountain like a mountain. Do you know what's alive in the hills and the mountains? 
the sound of music. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got a mountain, and then the next one is opposite, so it's a valley. Be sure when you are doing um, fun folds in particular that you take the time to make sure that your folds are straight and give them a good burnish. And then, oh, see, the turn it back the right way. And then the next one is going to be another mountain fold, like a shoe. And that means you should be able to start seeing this card base coming together, right? Done. Done and done. And then this one, we're just going to fold it. It really doesn't matter which way you call it. There's only one way to fold it. You could fold it this way or the other way, and they're both going to be done the same. So here's what's going to happen. This piece is going to adhere to this piece, and then it's going to have a little bit of a piece adherence here on the back. You can put this clear to the left. You could put it clear to the right. You can put it part way. You can put it part way. You can put it in the middle. You can put it wherever you want and call it whatever you like. I kind of my brain looks for a sentiment on the right side of a card front. It just does. If you ever look at my cards, you'll notice most of the time I have my sentiment towards the right side of the card. So I looked here and then I just basically split the difference between the left side and the sentiment. Okay, so now we are going to do some matting. And this is very technical stuff, so I hope you're watching. All of these card cuts will be on my blog tomorrow, so you can just watch and enjoy the magic of me adhering things to each other. Hello, Wendy. Appreciate you joining from Wales. Okay, I have some Gingham Cottage DSP. This is in... Um, well, I'm going to call it Crushed Curry and Daffodil Delight and So Saffron. It's kind of got all of them. It's uh, a big plaid on one side and a smaller gingham check on the other. So I kind of mixed and matched. And I am matting everything on Early Espresso. Now these two large pieces, I am going to mat with the large plaid showing. Like a shoe. Uh-huh. Oops. And I, you know me, I am a liquid glue kind of girl. You could use stamp and seal if you'd like. Obviously, duh, you can use whatever you want. Uh, yeah, we, it was, you know, the thing about it, Jean, is if it had been two years, three years ago, we'd have all come back and had the flu and been like, well, duh, we all went down there. We didn't get enough sleep. We were all having a great time. And there were a bunch of us there in kind of a closed condition. So came back from a convention and got sick. I routinely got sick when I came back from business trips, when I, whatever. But now that it's COVID, it's, it's scarier. And I can tell you, I know people have had real... I know that COVID was bad. It really was. Whatever iteration that I had... I'm just going to say it was like a not even terribly bad flu. The only hard part was the week after I got home, I was so tired. I mean, I just, I haven't been that tired in, let's go with like, you know, ever. It, it was crazy how tired I was. Okay, so I have two pieces here. And what you'll see is these are the ones that are going to go on, let's call this the card front. And the other one will be on the back. And then I'm going to do the inside. Now, one of the really good tips... Hey, Susan, appreciate you coming, and Dan, Seen, and Judy. Um, one of the good tips that I got from Carol is to stamp and adhere your inner liner before you put the card together, and that is a really, really good idea, just saying. It's a lot harder. You ob obviously can do it, but it'll be a lot harder to put it together um, after it's all together. Okay, so I am going to stamp the My Heart is Filled with Gratitude sentiment and this is obviously from the um, gathered wheat set remember when you're using one of the red stamps i like to do a stamp ahead of time to be sure that if i'm if i think i'm straight that i am straight and that has to do with how good a job you did with your stickers if you've used them and how good a job stampin up did engraving that image onto the red rubber so this one looks like it's pretty true so i'm just going to put it in the middle hold it a second or two yeah, see, it's just, it's easy to get sick, right? I mean, we, it's just easy to get sick, and it's even easier these days. Um, so, but I did do a home test, and I did my four days in a row. That's what they tell you. If you have a negative result, you need to do four days in a row getting negative results before you say, yes, it's actually negative, and that's what I did. So I'm going to take this uh, big 
image from Gathered Wheat, and it's a little bigger than my block, but it's okay, it works. And I am going to stamp it off to the side here in Crushed Curry ink. Like a so. Oh, so beautiful. Oh my goodness. It's so beautiful. I love wheat. Wheat. <laughs> Thank you, Deb. <laughs> but not in a creepy way. <laughs> That's cute. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and mat this on early espresso. And I appreciate you following me, especially in a not creepy way. That's much more reassuring. Okay. All right, so here we go. And again, with the early espresso, do you have to mat everything? No, of course not. But perhaps you've noticed from my cards, I tend to mat things. So there you go. And I'm going to put, before I get it in there, I'm going to put one uh, rusty metallic, not rusty, rustic metallic adhesive back dot on there. And then it does help to take one second to get yourself oriented, or as we say in the military, wrongly, orientated, to your card so that you put this on the correct panel. And it's going to want to go right here. So let's go ahead and get that on with some liquid glue. Now I'm just going to warn you straight up, this may take a little longer than 30 minutes because the decorations are coming up and that takes just a few more minutes. Maybe it won't because I'm not doing any die cutting. I've done it all ahead of time because, you know, that's just how I roll. Okay, so let's do a little more adhering. I am going to put this on here. Now this is a little risky. I'm not going to lie to you. This is a little risky um, because I'm going to stamp the sentiment after I have put this on the card front. Ooh, gutsy. But I'm going to show you why I'm going to do it like that in just a second. All right. And then we have one more piece. And for this small piece and then the um, sidestep, I'm going to use the gingham on the, on the showing portion. That was like the worst stated thing ever. I'm going to use the gingham on the showing section. Oh, goodness. I'm putting the gingham up, okay? That's what I was trying to say. Putting the gingham up. And that goes on this piece right here. <clears throat> Thank you, Deborah. Yeah, I, I'm, i you know, I really, I actually had thought that I'd probably had COVID before because my personal opinion is we're all going to get it. So there's them who has and them who will. And I just kind of assumed that in two years I'd probably had it. But Based on the absolute exhaustion I felt, I'm going to say maybe I hadn't. Okay, so that's going there like that. And we're going to hold off on the back piece for a second because I'm ready to decorate. I'm ready to decorate. I want to decorate. Now, this is the side step. And basically what's going to happen is I'm going to decorate this front. And then it's going to be adhered here. And before I adhere it, I'm going to set it in place like this to get an idea where I want my sentiment, and then I'm going to stamp my sentiment right here. Does that make sense? In fact, let's just go ahead and do that so that I don't get too far along before I have to fix this if I screw it up. All right, so here's my sentiment. <clears throat> Simply thankful for all you do. And I can see how big it is, and I can see how much space I need, right? And then I can kind of... Uh, center this sidestep piece between the left side and the sentiment. So that looks good. Uh, let me go ahead and ink this up. Where did my ink pad go? Here it is. Here's a question. How can you have three square feet of space and lose something? This is what I don't understand, but I can do it. And, and if you've ever watched my videos, you'll know I do it pretty routinely. All right, so now this is a kind of a critical stamp, right? Because I've already adhered this to the card base. So I really want to be sure that I have a good, I know that I'm going to be straight. Whew, that looks pretty true. So what I'm going to do is just set this in place like so. And that looks about right, right there. So I will just push it down. I'm going to be really careful to not rock. Don't rock the boat, baby. Rock the boat. Don't rock the boat, baby. Oh, and I still got one. But you know what I'm going to do? That looks like the right exact size for a metallic dot. So I'm going to go with it. I'm rolling here, baby. I'm rolling. All right. What I thought I would do is take the splatter image 
and I'm going to stamp right over the top. My, <laughs> my desk is Area 51. Nobody knows what's here. I've got the splatter image. I'm just going to stamp right over the top in crushed curry just to give it a little bit of boom. And then we're going to make sure that I can actually cover that and it doesn't look ridiculous before I get too far down the line. Oh, shoot, fire. You'll never even know that's there, man. Come on, man. That's perfectly perfect. That's going to be great. That'll work. So you see, sometimes you get lucky. I got really lucky right there. Hello, Mary Lou from South Carolina. Alrighty, so with that done, we can set it aside. And now I'm going to decorate this card front. And let me show you what we're going to do. What we're going to do here is first off, we're going to do some of that gingham cottage with the gingham up. <clears throat> like so. On early espresso. Espresso, early espresso. And then that's going to go right here on this front panel. You know what's unique about this card? Who can tell me? I bet you can't figure it out because I'm not done yet, but you'll know by the end. For those of you who know me, there's something very unique about this card for me. Okay, now, <clears throat> let's look at our decorations, shall we? I have some happy little leaves. First off, I die cut six of the little wheat doohickeys. Wheat tops, wheat nubs, wheat tops six of those and that's from the wheat die set and it's cool you get three of them so you can just run twice and you get it those are crushed curry then i took a piece of craft paper right the craft paper like this and i embossed it in the leaf fall 3d folder like so and then i used the aspen tree dies to cut out leaves and i've cut out two large and two small let me go ahead and shut this up that's it faith you got it and marva yes indeedy doodle yes indeedy doodle no dimensionals anywhere on here okay so can you see that this is these are embossed all right, I played around a lot with this because I wanted to use the leaf labels, but I needed to hide the holes, which I did. But I also wanted these to be a little different. So I thought, well, I'll just emboss these and leave these flat. And that is in fact what I ended up doing. Isn't that crazy? So what we're gonna do, here's how I want you to do this. We're gonna just go ahead and set this on the card. And here's why, because this way, you can make sure that none of your decorations, your decorations can extend past your step panel, but they should not extend past the top or the sides of the card front, okay? Otherwise, if you do that, it's still gonna look beautiful, but it's not gonna go in your envelope very good, okay? And everybody wants to be able to mail their cards. Although, no lie, this is gonna take some extra postage because it's kind of thick. Okay. So these two are kind of the most critical positioning because of their holes that I don't want to see. So I'm going to put them like so. And this hole is going to show, but I discovered that if I put one of these little wheat doohickeys right there, and here's just a tip. Let me show you this tip. You're like, God, Mary, will you just get on with it? When this is folded down, like it's going to be when the card is folded, okay, that's where the front, the top of the card is. So when you're making your estimates, your estimates and putting your die cuts on and trying to not extend past your card, this fold is your boundary. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to that. So right side. So right. Okay. Okay. See what I mean? Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's what we have. Okay. So that's going to be about where it goes. And we're gonna just start layering things on. And I thought that the wheats ought to be in twos. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm gonna put a big here and I'm gonna let it extend just a little bit past the edge. And we'll have a small here. 
Now, obviously the first time you make this, it's probably not gonna go together just as quickly as this, but duh, I have the sample right off screen, so I already know where everything's going. But what you wanna do is you wanna play with it until you have that aha moment. The, you know the moment I mean? The moment where you go, oh yeah, there it is, uh-huh. That's how I want it to look. And you just keep playing with it until you get there. And you will, I promise you, you will. But this is what I came up with for me. So I'm extending a little bit past this edge, which is fine, but not below the bottom, which is good. And we'll put another little doohickey right here. I think we'll put it under there because that's what I did before and I liked it. I still like it. All right, we'll go like that. And then we're gonna have some uh, wheats in here like so, and another wheat or two in there. And then we're gonna put a double, uh, double loop linen thread bow. Okay, okay, set it, set it, okay. Okay, let's get going. Let's stop yakking, Mare, and get going. Stop yakking. Stop a yakking. Okay, so, hey, Kathy from Colorado and Juanita from Kent, Washington. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of liquid glue. I should probably, I shouldn't have done it on that side. I didn't want it on that side. Note to self, pay attention to where you're doing, because these do have an up and a down, okay? And you know what? I'm going to set that aside and grab a second one, because there's no reason to use one that's got glue all over it when I have 4.9 million of them. But there is an up and a down side. You can see this one is a little rougher. This one has a smoother um, surface, so that's the one you want to use as your up surface. So I'm just going to put a little bit of liquid glue extending past the edge, but not past that fold, like so. And then we'll put this one down as well. And I'm kind of keeping the liquid glue in the middle so that if I want to or and or need to tuck wheats under there, I can do that. All right, and then we'll, and I'm doing the same here, same here, keeping it kind of in the middle, keeping my panel where it's gonna live and then adhering this like so. All right. And then we can tuck, we can put the next one on. Ugh. Again, keep the liquid glue in the center. And we're gonna put, I want this one a little bit more turned, I think. Yeah. See, the advantage of liquid glue is you get some time to play. You get some time to play with it and make it how you want it to be. Because what? It's paper, people. Make it do what you want it to do. I'm just throwing that out there. And then this can tuck under, like so. And we have one more. I'm a little giddy. I'm actually not on any medicine. I'm not. Well, maybe Diet Mountain Dew, that counts. I know, I'm a little giddy. I think it's because I'm actually trying to hurry a little bit because there's a lot of card. And I want to get done, but I don't want to keep you like until 2 o'clock in the afternoon or anything like that. Okay, so that goes right there. Perfect. Now we're going to use our tweezers to tuck some wheats in here. And I'm going to do a little bit of a fit check just to be sure I can cover that hole. And I don't need to cut off any of the the stem. If you don't have enough room to tuck, you can just cut off some of the stem and you'll be fine. But that's going to work right there. So let's go ahead and put that in. Just put a little liquid glue right there. Like so. Whoops. No, I really am feeling better. The last three days I've actually gotten on the treadmill every morning, which it has, mm, it took me a minute to get back to that. Not going to kid you. Okay, so right here, this is the most critical wheat of the whole card right there, is to cover that hole. And it's not a perfect cover, but once it stands up like that, you can't see it. I promise. Okay? Aw, oh, Lenny, that's fine. That's very nice. Thank you so much. Okay, here we go. Here's the next one. Like that. And then... Here's two more, and let me double check that I'm gonna be able to slide those under there without having to do anything weird. If y'all don't have tweezers, just get them, for goodness sake. Get them on Amazonian. 
the thing from whence all good things come, if it isn't from Stampin' Up, it comes from Amazon, right? All right, so here's why you left those liquid glues in the middle so that you can pick those leaves up and tuck under. And I'm gonna go ahead and let that extend off the side because I really like how that looks and it doesn't hurt a thing, but it can't go past that edge. That's the only place that you have a restriction. If there's any such thing as a restriction in making a card, that would be one of them right there. You don't wanna go past the edge of your card base. Now look at that. I took a little liberty and I made, I got them both glued up first together this one I'm not going to do because I want them a little further apart. A little more glue here. And then we're going to make a double loop bow. It occurred to me I have been making all these sort of clean and simple cards. Crazy. And I haven't used a double loop bow in for what felt like forever to me. And so I thought this will be the perfect card for that. Okay. Now, before we get that done, let's go ahead and adhere this to our card base. Now, you're going to put your adhesive, and you could use tear and tape, you could use seal. I like liquid glue because I like liquid glue anyway, and it gives me a little time to play with it, right? So that I can make sure that it's lined up because I want the bottom of this step piece to be lined up with the bottom of the card, and you can see it. Ha it ma that makes a nice straight line across there with my mat. All right, so I'm really just gonna wag this. This is about an inch. So I'm just gonna put liquid glue on the back of the step about an inch up, okay? The nice thing about liquid glue is it kind of, um, it kind of squishes, which is of course the also the downside of liquid glue. I know, Tara, there are no dimension. I feel like I need to put a dimensional on just to make this a merry card because otherwise it's just not a merry card. Okay. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna skosh it just a little bit, which means I'm not going all the way an inch up. Now, if, if you wanted to be more precise, you could lay your step like so and make a little pencil mark right there that would show you how far up you can go with your liquid glue. But I'm gonna just wag it because you know I'm a risk taker that way. All right, so we're gonna put this on and we'd like it to be kind of where we want it to be to begin with. I'm looking to line the bottom up and I'm looking to split the difference between the edge of the sentiment and the edge of the card. And of course it would also be good if everything was straight. So spend a minute to make it right. There we go. And then just kind of hold it a second while that liquid glue Please, please, please add the dimensional. Okay, I'm gonna come up with a spot for a dimensional. I'm sure I can come up with a spot for a dimensional. Okay, so that's this edge. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to hold the card closed. Okay, so open, closed. And we're going to adhere this to the back of the card. Okay, so this is about a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna do the same thing here and eyeball that quarter inch. You don't need a lot. The beauty of liquid glue is it is a very, very good adhesive. Make sure your card is closed back up and then lay it down like so and hold it while it adheres. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 Okay, and then we'll do one more thing here before we get the bow going. Now, truthfully, if I was a smart girl, you might wanna do this before you adhere it to the mat, but I didn't, so we're just gonna be careful. And fortunately, I liked the wheat in the middle, not up from the corner, I wanted it kinda like this. So it should be okay with the mat, but you know, if you're worried about it, do it first. Again, I'm gonna try not to rock, so I don't have a requirement to put a, there we go, perfect, I'll take it. I will take that for 1,000, Alex. And then we're going to adhere this to the back of the card base, and it is going to kind of cover that seam right there and just make it a little more finished. 
little more finish, little more finish. How are we doing on time? Oh yeah, we're okay. We're gonna be fine. It's gonna be a little bit longer than normal, but it'll be okay. That'll be okay. Okay, so we're gonna adhere that like so. And then we can just let that set for a second and I'm gonna make that double loop bow, okay? So I have some linen thread, my favoriteest thing, and I have my tweezers at the ready. So here's how you make a double loop linen thread bow. You hold the, the tail of the thread between your thumb and forefinger, and then you're gonna wrap around four fingers four times. So there's one, two, three, and four. And then you're gonna wrap around these two fingers another four times. One, two, three, and four. And then use your scissors that you reserve for ribbon to cut that. Carefully pull that off of your fingers. Switch to your dominant hand is what I would do. And so there you can see you have two loops, uh, double loop, got it? double loop linen thread bow. And then you're gonna squish them together like so. And then you're going to go one hand over the other and create a figure eight, like so, okay? And then take this tweezers as your third hand, because God probably didn't give you a third hand, so you have to use a tool. It's what separates us from the animals is our ability to use tools. And we're going to take another piece of the linen thread and tie around the juncture of that figure eight. Okay, and just do a double overhand knot, like so. Okay, now you're gonna ferrofaucetize it. This is like ferrofaucet hair, this is my ferrofaucet bow. And I like to leave the long tails, at least until I get it on my card, and then I can make a decision. Do I want them to be less Farrah, more Kate Jackson? Or am I looking for pure Farrah? And for those of you of a certain age, you know what I mean. Charlie's Angels. Okay, there we go. So I like how this is Farrahizing fine. You can just kind of pull the loops apart like that. You want it to look like this is Farrah just jumped out of bed and not like really happened, which was she spent 77 hours in the makeup chair getting her hair done. Now, we're gonna use a glue dot here. A glue dot, come on. And we're gonna put it kind of right in the middle of this card front like so. And then there we go. Thank you guys, I appreciate you very much. Hey, Karen, appreciate you coming. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim that just a little bit, like so, and then I'll take some more of these. Oh, I did wanna put one more thing, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. I'm gonna go ahead and take this little tiny wheat image. I'm gonna stamp it right there in the corner. In, I have a troll, who's a troll? Whoever is a troll, somebody delete them. I don't see them this time. I had it like one of the last times. Okay, so I'm just gonna stamp this in crushed curry right there. This is one of those little stamps you gotta be careful with because there's a lot of stamp and not a lot of image, okay? So it's really, really easy to get carried away and get a halo. So don't, don't get a halo. Now we'll go ahead and put a little, oops, I got a hair. A little glue, uh, rustic metallic dot, and then we're gonna put a couple of them up on here. We'll do a quick envelope, and we'll be done, Skay. Let's see, I think we'll put one up here, like that. Okay, and there we go. So there is our sidestep card. It's a great, great fold. Why? Because it sets up perfectly. Sometimes fun folds are a, oh no. The queen has died. Okay, wait just a second. That's sad. I know she was old. I knew she was going. That is the end of an era. The passing of an era right there, you guys. So, God rest the queen. Okay, 
So what I was saying is sometimes fun folds are fun and they're beautiful and they look awesome, but when your recipient goes to display it, it's not so great. But this one actually stands up perfectly. Um, so I really, really like this fold. It will not by any stretch of the imagination be the last time I do it. Um, let me grab a envelope and we're going to just stamp the wheat right there. I hope her kids and grandkids got there in time. All right. Okay, go walk your very pregnant dog, your daughter's very pregnant dog. Uh, we're going to stamp this in uh, crushed curry right here on the front. And then, oh, yes, I also don't have a piece of envelope stuff. So hang on just a second. Let me get another piece of the paper. The paper? I need more of the paper. Who has paper? Somebody has some paper for me. Okay. And I like this big buffalo plaid. Yes, now they have King Charles. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, enough said about that. We'll see how that works out. Okay. A little bit of liquid glue and our DSP. And you know what? If you wanted to, you could actually stamp this with the wheat, the wheat image, and then it would really match the back of the card. But I did not do that. So, yes, we definitely knew knew she was going. The the writing was on the wall, but um, yes, a very very much a class act. And as a horse person, um, I appreciated her lifelong lifelong love of the horses. Um, so there you go. Okay. <clears throat> but she's with Edward, so that'll be good. All right, and there we go. One each sidestep card from the Gathered Wheat set. And I hope you will try this because it's super, super easy and super, super fun. I appreciate you guys spending part of your day with me. I hope you'll come back on Saturday for the YouTube Live at 7 p.m. Um, Eastern. Yes, she did love the love her doggies. She definitely did love her doggies. I will, Karen. I'm going to I'm going to enter it right there for you. All right, guys. Y'all have a great rest of your week and a good weekend. See you on Saturday. Ta.